trailer here. Let's uh, check in on the, the trailer. The trailer did fine going downhill. We had no issues whatsoever. Uh, as you see, we've kind of tied up some chains. I think we're throwing sparks a bit. Uh, on the highway last night, we had one person on a motorcycle flag us down. <clears throat> but other than that, we had, I mean, we've had no load shifting. The straps have stayed tight. Uh, this thing's so far, it's run like a champ. All the lights look good. So, uh, so far, so good. Driving the trailer at night, for the most part, has been not a problem. It's, uh, had a few interesting moments, uh, mostly due to uh, the road, the road conditions. Coming out of West Yellowstone, they didn't they didn't mention when you took the cutover that uh, they were doing some really serious road work, and it was essentially a dirt road in really poor condition with mud and stuff that. You know, luckily we put the tarp down, which protected some of it, but we got mud splatter all over it. Uh, we also lost one of our cable tie downs in uh, in Yellowstone. The long, uh, the how do you say it? The the extra uh, part of the uh, the nylon cable was uh, had come undone. You know, you got something like 10 extra feet after strapping everything down and it and I tied it off to another section and somehow it came undone and was stringing along and went underneath the tire of the trailer and that popped the hook off of that side and the buckle the the ratchet part uh, went under the tire as well and that ripped it off and shot it off into who knows where uh, Luckily, though, when that happened, it didn't tear the, the nylon line itself. So we can replace it with another shackle. And I just took that part and I tied it down by hand. Now, granted, it's not as tight as it could be, but we still have uh, three other lines holding it down as well as a tarp over the whole thing bungeed down as well. Um, Anyway, by this point, it's, you know, we've gone up and down hills. We crossed the Continental Divide here, uh, just over 7,000 feet. We've had some, I would say, medium to medium plus inclines, nothing severe. Uh, a few twisty, turny, you know, parts, but, you know, all in all, you can't complain what this thing has gone through for the, the price that we paid for it. Roll sound. So did some modifications to the wiring. On the way out, it was because we had the two-inch drop on the hitch. Uh, it uh, did a it scraped the ground a bit, and at some point uh, went through one of the channels on the wiring, and then also smashed the coupling that I was able to uh, rebuild a bit. Uh, but I think I want to get a quick detach with a permanent mount anyway, so we'll work on that after the fact. But I was able to splice the wiring back together uh, and then put the whole thing in a protective uh, uh, sleeve. Uh, and then zip tie, using zip ties, I was able to uh, mount that in such a way that it didn't get in the way anymore and it wasn't dragging. Uh, the tarp on the top is held together pretty well. Uh, we did have a rip and had to punch through and do some zip ties to attach it to the frame. But, you know, it was a free tarp from Harbor Freight, so it's not like it was something we expected to actually survive and be usable after the trip. Uh, other than that, it's been running great. Uh, we are, like I said, doing about almost 80 here, and it's real easy to forget you're even pulling something. Welcome to my review of the Tractor Supply 5x8 utility trailer. My family and I had to do an emergency trip from our house in Central California to our other home in Livingston, Montana to do some work on the house before winter hit. We currently have four vehicles 
a hatchback, a full-size sedan, a minivan, and a Yukon XL, which is in essence a Suburban. It's a big you know, boat of an SUV. Uh, it needed new tires, and even if we had the new tires on it, it the gas mileage just kind of put it out of the running. Uh, the other two vehicles being too small, that left the minivan. Uh, it's myself, my wife, and our three uh, young children, all under 10. So with the five of us, we pretty much had the minivan full, so we, we needed the trailer to carry stuff up there and then also to bring stuff from the house back. I went searching for the best trailer we could get for the buck. And I figured, you know, we'll buy something used because we try to be frugal about everything we do. And I realized that people selling used trailers are on crack. It is just ridiculous the amount of money they want for them. I'd wanted to get an enclosed trailer so we could lock it up. We also belong to a co-op ranch in Northern California. We take mini bikes and other toys up there to drive around. It'd be nice to be able to park something there, lock it up and not worry about it. And it, it it's just ridiculous. So after looking at a trailer down the street that somebody wanted $850 for that looked like it's been sitting out the rain for the past 10 years, I thought to myself, I could buy something at Tractor Supply for cheaper than, you know, new for cheaper than what this guy's asking for, for this beat up piece of crap. So I, it was like, why am I being an idiot? Why don't I just go do that? So we went to Tractor Supply and I was planning to get their five by 10 with the wood planking floor. Cause that's the one I really wanted, but it's not really the one I needed. I knew I, I really just needed the five by eight, but I didn't like the mesh bottom. Uh, but the five by 10 that they had, was on clearance, it was and price lowered, and I thought, great. But turns out they had a problem with the title, they couldn't sell it to me, so they gave me 10% off of any other trailer. Well, that made the 5x8 a no-brainer, because it was already, if you do it, the cost per square foot analysis on it, it was already cheaper than any other trailer there. Put it on sale, makes it cheaper still, add the, the, the 10% discount, and now we're talking about something that's almost per square foot half the cost of every other trailer on the lot. I will say this, uh, somebody else had mentioned before, it looks like these trailers were designed by engineers and finished by children because the finish on this thing is ridiculous. Uh, and, you know, there's some other parts. You need to look them over, go to a place that has several of them on the lot, find the best one, pick that, and then realize that you'll probably have to fix one or two little small things along the way. But, you know, here I was about to do a, sh you know, a shakedown torture test, 2,400 mile trip, and I needed this thing to last. So I picked the best one they had on the lot. Uh, they, you know, they hooked it up. They got everything going for me. We took it back home and, you know, we were off the next day. O overall, my opinions on this is four out of five stars, uh, only because the, f the fit and finish on it is not that great. And the mesh bottom is worthless. Unless you're hauling just boxes or lawnmowers or something light, you need to have wood planking on the bottom. I'm planning to rip the mesh out and put in either just wood flooring or an entire wood box to make it my own enclosed trailer.